In this video, I'm gonna be talking about some of the differences between static friction and kinetic friction, and we're gonna solve for the coefficient of static friction and the coefficient of kinetic friction by using force sensors and then also using a little bit of mathematics as well. All right, so if we're using one of these force sensors, typically they have a hook on the end. So if you push or pull on something, it's gonna give you a reading of how many Newtons of force are being applied to that hook. Now, if you want to find the coefficient of static friction and kinetic friction, you want to make sure you do some certain things experimentally, graphically, and mathematically. So let's first talk about static friction. So static friction is when an object stays at rest and those irregularities of the surface act against an applied force or some kind of other force trying to move it. And that static friction is going to push up against it with an equal and opposite force until it basically maxes out in the amount that it can oppose that force. So for example, um, if you're going to pull, and we'll call this maybe a force of tension because it's attached to a string, and you pull it a little bit more, a little bit more, and a little bit more with this force of tension, then it's going to pull on this hook and then your force sensor is going to read it. And based on the amount of static friction that the surface is able to um, produce, it's going to push back on the object more, more, and more, and make the object stay at rest. So what does that look like graphically? Is you're gonna do this, you would hold on to your force sensor, and you're gonna slowly pull it more and more and then as you pull with more and more force, if you do that steadily, then it's gonna rise, rise, and rise, and then the time is going to run a certain amount. Now, when you do um, that, at a certain point, the object is gonna to start to move. From there, it's gonna take a little bit of a dip, and then it's gonna even out from there. So from at that point, once you get the object to slide, you want to keep a constant velocity the best you can because a constant velocity is a state of equilibrium where there is no acceleration. So it will tell you the exact amount of kinetic friction you have because both of these are going to be equal when you are pulling it at a constant velocity. So what's happening here is the force of static friction has a maximum threshold at which it can push back on an object based on the roughness of the surface and the amount of normal force between the object and the surface itself. Now, as you can see, static friction pushes more than kinetic friction can possibly do. So we'll go ahead and say that maybe static friction can push back with a force of eight Newtons and then the force of kinetic friction can only push back with a force of maybe five Newtons. So because static friction is dealing with an object that is at rest, there's a little bit more in terms of molecular forces keeping these together. And then because of the irregularities in the surface, um, the object is in a sense kind of sitting in the grooves of the surface and something that's at rest has the tendency to stay at rest and has its inertia. So for all those reasons, it's a little bit harder to move something that is at rest. Now, once it's moving, it's kind of cruising over these irregularities of the surface and it's already in motion. So it has its inertia that wants to keep it in motion. So for those reasons, it's going to be a little bit easier to pull it along and the force of kinetic friction isn't going to be pushing back quite as much. Now, the way that you would solve for the exact value is this. The force of friction is equal to the mu, which is the coefficient of friction, which could be static or kinetic, times the normal force. Now, for each of these, um, the normal force is going to be the same value. So if we draw a free body diagram off to the side, then we would have the force of gravity pulling it down, and then we would have the normal force pushing up, and then these two would be equal numbers in opposite directions. And we know that the force of gravity is mg, so mass times 9.8. So each of our masses is exactly one kilogram, so one times 9.8 is 
which means that the normal force is also 9.8 newtons. So if we were to do the coefficient of static friction, it would look like this. We have the force of friction. We have the mu sub s, the coefficient of static friction. And then as we said earlier, this normal force is 9.8 newtons. So if you go ahead and divide both sides by 9.8, the coefficient of static friction would be 0 0.82, which is a unitless number because if you're taking 8 newtons divided by 9.8 newtons, the units are going to cancel out. Now you could do the same thing for the coefficient of kinetic friction. It would look fairly similar except this one can only push back with five newtons of force. So we have five newtons of force equal to mu sub K, the coefficient of kinetic friction times 9.8 newtons. Again, divide both sides by 9.8. And then the coefficient of kinetic friction would then come out to 0 0.51. So what the coefficient of friction is telling you is it basically just a measurement of how rough the surface is and how much it can push back on an object that's not in motion or in motion, um, but technically what it is is a ratio between the horizontal force being applied to it compared to the amount of force needed to lift it. So it is very typically a number that's less than one. So you'll see a couple things when you find the coefficient of static friction and kinetic friction on the same surface. Um, first, the coefficient of static friction is going to be a greater value, just like this one. We have 0.82, which is clearly greater than the 0 0.51. And then secondly, as I said, it is very typical that your numbers are also gonna be less than one. You'll have a small unitless number. So to do a quick recap, basically what you're gonna do is apply a force to this force sensor and pull slightly harder and harder until you get the object to budge. And then once you get it to budge, you pull at a constant velocity. You'll have a graph that looks something like this to where it's gonna rise more and more, take a little drop, and then you wanna keep it as consistent as possible from there. And then you can take the couple steps that I took mathematically in order to get the coefficient of kinetic and static friction. So I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and listening.